Real quick, we should talk about what's going down with Israel and Conmebol. And we're a little late to this party. Yeah, we are very know, late to this my party. My bad, everybody. You know, this it was hot. It was a hot topic. We just said, hey, let's just let that straight from the parilla. Let's just let it sit over there for a little bit before we get our forks and knives out, all right? So just to break this down for anybody that's not sure what's going on, there was an agreement between Israel and Conmebol. And basically... I can try to read this for you. Um, in the agreement signed on April 12th, Israel and Conmebol pledged to increase collaboration in soccer development, coaching, refereeing, and women and youth football programs. More significantly, it could pave the way toward Israel's future participation in the South American Federation's prestigious tournaments, such as the Copa America and the Libertadores. Connor, immediate thoughts when you read this. It's money, baby. Money. Ain't nothing new. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Israel wants to double down on their nationalism due to, um, you know, current world climate. And they don't have a lot of people they can play with. So they said, what can we put some of this U.S. money towards? Um, Why not get the footy going? Who wants to play with us? What about Conmebol? Definitely not CONCACAF. Why not Conmebol? They're broke. Sure. They are broke. Yeah. And even if they weren't broke, they're probably just also the most likely to say yes. Them and calf. Calf would have made more sense. It's right there, bro. Yeah. But there's too many teams in Africa. They're not going to accept a guest nation. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. Like, Cormier Bowl has got space. They want to make more money from the tournament. They want more games. That's why we're doing it in the United States this year. Are there any pros to this move? From a comable perspective, you guys let us know in the comments. No. I don't think so. I think it brings some very questionable political spotlight um, to the forefront. Uh, and yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's a really good look. I also think that people just might not care. People just might not care. Okay, what's worse? Qatar being invited to the Copa or Israel being invited to the Copa? Israel. I disagree. I think is- you think Qatar? Yeah. Why? I think the Israeli national team is probably, at least the U teams, are certainly better. So if we're talking like a U20, U23, Copa America, I mean, they made the final of the U20 World Cup in Argentina, for God's sake. And I think the senior team, I think over the next 12 years, will be better than Qatar. I think Qatar have a maybe better team right now. I mean, they had a fire Asian Cup campaign. We will see in round three of World Cup qualifying if they just caught fire, if they actually, those guys. I want to be clear. I don't think it'd be like a massive competition upgrade. I think, you know that I'm I'm always advocating that it should be Mexico, Canada, United States, Korea, Australia, Japan. Should always be the six. That's Jack's dream for a united anti-European Okay. <laughs> that's what Avengers. i want so, so before y'all come from in the comments like jack is a he's selling out for the fizzy bubble not at all i don't really think this is a good idea i think it's actually borderline ridiculous but just from a play style there's a moderate advantage minuscule i think between i think uh having israel over qatar yeah um but in all other aspects this just doesn't make any sense to me no it's kind of out of left field it's like what what happened there i bet you it was it was it was an israeli idea that they want to get out there and conmebol was looking at the money that qatar gave them qatar was probably wanted to re-extend that maybe mm-hmm. qatar like saudi arabia was reaching out like hey we want to play against messi again okay let's look at the money let's look at the offers <laughs> um and then out of nowhere, Israel's like, why don't we do that? And they probably offered a lot more money. I think full, flat out, that's what it is. I think money changed hands. It is what it is. There's also, if you want to get really, really into it, there's a history of some suspect relations between some Argentine heads of state who mm. are no longer heads of state 
Um, but I believe that there was sort of a weird situation back like our freshman year of college, quite a few years ago, where Christina Kirchner accepted some like heirlooms, some like diamonds or something like that. And then there was evidence of like Argentine something. I want to say like Argentine weapon manufacturing in a bomb that went off somewhere in the Middle East. You're going over my head, bro. I know. I know, dude. This is a Hail Mary. You didn't hear much about it, but she was, there was a little bit that was swirling around her in regards to that. There was some sort of weird, strange involvement there that came out of left field for me, frankly. Um, And I was reading about it on La Nación, and I was like, why? And then I never heard anything about it ever again. But also, there was that one journalist in Argentina that was going to like testify against like the Kirchneristas for all sorts of um, corruption and stuff, and he was found suicidal, killed himself, yeah. less than twenty four hours in his hotel room after he gave like a press conference, like I'm taking all these mofos down. So look, there's there's a long and storied history of strange goings on with Argentine politics. We had we've we've had everything. We've had dictatorships. We've had coups. We've had um, man. What 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 yeah, is it called? You and the, the junta? rest in America, right? No, I understand. But like we're like involved with the Europeans as well, like the Nazis. It's it's much more. Um, well, you wish you were European. It's the difference between yeah. you guys and the rest of Latin America. No, we don't like the Europeans either now. We are like our own weird blend of, we're a little bit of both, but we hate both as well. We're like self-hating South Americans yes. that think we're better because we're Europeans, but also we hate England, France, and uh, I guess not Germany anymore, not as much. You just, we're, you're just weird. a very confused populace. Yes, and then we're also selling massive amounts of soy to the Chinese. I, I, I don't know, but we love Miami. It, it, nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. We're no. very, we're very odd no. ducks. Yeah. I, I don't know if the public, and I'm talking about the general South American public, I don't know if they would react that favorably to this news, bro. I feel like no, Israel is no, something you just so. don't want to touch. And let me tell you, if y'all have not been to South America, it is, especially in parts, surprisingly and even shockingly progressive. Yeah. Like, like more so than New York or like Austin, Texas. Like there are some things I was hearing in Lima. I was like, where am I? In Buenos Aires, it was even worse. Granted, I was in San Telmo, and if you know, you know. But the point is, I feel like there's going to be like borderline boycotts if Israel was invited to a Copa America. And can you imagine? You know what? I no, I don't I have much time. There's... I got to I got I got to okay. say this now. Yeah. And then you respond and then we'll end the video and you guys, you know, if you want a part 2 on this, subscribe to the Patreon link in the description. I think the most asinine part of this entire agreement, even though it's largely hypothetical, is Israeli club participation in the Libertadores. That has got to be the dumbest That's shit wild. I've ever heard in my wild. life. That is wild. That's a that's a bridge too far. That's a bridge too far right there. Yeah, we we we've we've become a circus. Yeah, Conmebol, if it's not already a farce, is a farce. If you have Israeli Tel Aviv clubs flying to Montevideo or flying to Santiago for a group stage game in the Libertadores, oh, yeah. but but I thought one of the main reasons why we can't have Liga Mekis and MLS clubs is because the logistics. I thought it was too difficult to fly from Vancouver. To Montevideo, but Tel Aviv is just a stone skip in the pond. Like, yeah. what are we doing? And, and like, if we're talking money, do not tell me Liga Mekis ain't bringing a bag to the Libertadores. A bag, yeah, a bag, bro. And MLS bringing a bag too, if nothing less, for just TV rights. You know, maybe yeah. it's not going to be like crazy attendance, but MLS is not a broke league. But you're going to Tel Aviv FC, I don't even know this club, fly over to play Palmeiras? What is going on? Even yeah. the Qataris were like, no, we're not going to have the Qatari Stars League 
fly to Argentina. Even they were like, this is this is shameful. But I guess the Israelis, no. I guess yeah, it they makes can make perfect it happen. sense. I, I don't know. The, the, the last connection that I could draw is that there's a large Jewish population in Argentina, but Argentina isn't the head of... Yeah, what about um, Paraguay? How big is the Jewish population in Paraguay? Yeah, exa- exactly. There's it, there's no correlation in regards to uh, Conmebol as you know as a whole. Uh, it just no- nothing really makes sense here. It's very shocking. No, it doesn't. Just invite them over for a friendly. If you if you got cr- close relations with Israel, we're not going to comment on that. But if you, as the Argentine FA, say we would love to have a, a friendly with Israel, how do you do a friendly with Israel? But the Sudamericana participation, Libertadores competition, what are you smoking? For the clubs is very strange. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you, if you want to build that relationship, do it. Rip the friendlies. Rip the friendlies. It's not a bad rep. I mean, I would have preferred I, I, them over Honduras, you know. But. Sure, as a national team game, absolutely. And, yeah. and if that's if that's the extent of the agreement, I think anybody against the idea just doesn't like Israel politically. I yes. don't really think there's a footballing argument. No. But no, no, no. what the hell is Cavani going to say when they're at Boca practice and they say, oh, yeah, guys, um, don't know if you saw the schedule, but we're actually flying to Tel Aviv next week because we have a group stage game in the Libertadores. Are you kidding me? I think some of these guys wouldn't go. They'd be like, no. Why? That's, I think half the tournament would, would boycott. Yeah. And, and I, again, I don't think it'd be anti-Israel hate. I think it would mostly be like, this is dumb as shit. Yeah. Why are we having Israeli clubs in the Libertadores? It doesn't make any sense. Agreed. When Tigres is right there. Tigres is right there, and you could make four times the revenue. Some, or some Miami. Like, I want to know what the money's looking like. Like, who got the money? Who signed off on this because of the influx of cash? Like, and what was that number? Because that's what it is. It's It's got to be. Nothing else makes sense. No other reason was given. It was like, oh, we just want to do this out of the blue. It's like, whoa, why? Yeah. You know what? I, frankly, you remember when, um, you remember when, uh, oh, was it Bill O'Brien that traded, uh, <laughs> traded for a running back? You remember that? When the Texans oh, traded. Fan. Okay. Well, when the tra- Texans traded, um, Literally my favorite wide receiver ever. I don't know why I'm not remembering. Andre his Johnson. Name. No, not Andre Johnson. They traded uh DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins. They traded DeAndre Dude, Hopkins my to the ball Cardinals. knowledge in both sports. Let's just No, drop you a just light. have you you just have an insane memory for some of these things. Um I get eight hours of sleep, ladies and gentlemen. That shut, is the hack. Shut up. <laughs> God, I it is eight hours of sleep you. and exercise six days a week and a lot of red meat. Something you can appreciate. Yes, I can. The red meat is a myth. Cholesterol propagated by the FDA. It's all hydrogenated oils. That's what it is. So stop eating 100%. those little muffins that they love to throw out there. If, it kill feels, you. if you can leave something on a counter for <laughs> six hours and it's still moist when you come back to it, that's oil. That's not water. If it survives a nuclear fallout, probably not good for daily consumption. Yes. Yeah, Wade Wade Goggins, um <laughs> Wade Wayne Goggins, Wade Goggins. Look, the the uh the guy from Fallout doesn't look like that because of the bombs. He was safe in a shelter. It's because he was eating all those hydrogenated uh uh oils after the fact because they're the only thing that survived. That and the rad roach meat. That's going to be the video, guys. You let us know your thoughts down below. I think this is pretty ridiculous, and I, I don't see much Con Mobile has to gain other than a bag, which there were many bags to be had. I mean, just get the Chinese clubs over here for, for God's sake. I mean, Seriously. it's a joke. Seriously. No, it's a joke. You guys let us know your thoughts down below in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you enjoy. Hit subscribe so you don't miss more Con Mobile content on the channel. We'll see you on the next one.